Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name's John, and I'm an alcoholic. I'd like to start off my share tonight by saying a massive thank you to my sponsor, Wayne, for not only sponsoring me for the past few years and the guidance he's given me and for being there when I've needed him, but also for asking me to share tonight at the uh, 27th birthday of my home group, the Road to Recovery, meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. And this meeting has given me so much. It really, really, really has. You know, when I walked in through those doors right there, uh, back in 2010, uh, I, I was in a mess. I really, really was. My life was, <laughs> it was ruined. It really was through alcoholism. My life was completely ruined. I walked in through those doors and I, 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 I was, I'd just come out of a treatment center. I was in a supported housing project. I was classed as homeless. I, I wasn't able to see my kids. I was going for a divorce. You know, I, I hadn't worked for years you know, I'd been in and out of institutions over and over and over and over again. You know, my life was 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 completely like it's rock bottom. It really, really, really was. And I was just desperate. You know, I was really, really desperate not to pick up another drink. But not only that, inside, inside, I was spiritually bankrupt. I was ruined. I really, really was. You know, I had no confidence. I had no self-belief. You know, I, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I completely hated myself. I had no identity. I didn't know who I was. I had no direction in my life whatsoever. You know, it, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. And I came into this meeting just desperate. I just did not want to pick up the next drink. That's all I wanted. You know, and if that had been all I had been given in itself, that would have been a miracle. There's no two ways about it. I've been given so much more than that. You know, I came in, I heard a clear cut message in this room. You know, it was told to me in no uncertain terms what it was that I had to do if I wanted to recover. You know, I'd never had that before. I was told, right, if you want to recover, you can start tonight, get yourself a sponsor, follow a few simple suggestions, work through the 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous, get yourself a big butt, start working through that big butt, get involved in the home group, and you will recover. And I wasn't so sure. I really, really wasn't. You know, I did those simple things. And as a result of doing those simple things, 10 years later, my life is unrecognizable to the life I had that I explained when I walked in through those doors today. It's nothing like that today for me. You know, I had no education when I came into this, these rooms. You know, I've been able to go and get an education. I had no belief in my own ability. If you had have asked me, I wouldn't have even told you that I had a brain to be able to use in the first place. Yeah, I've been able to go back to college. I've been able to go to university. I've been able to get a career today that I've held down. I've done the same job for quite a number of years now. I've worked my way up in that job to like leading the projects where I work today and I'm running them all over the north of the city. I'm trusted with, you know, big stuff. You know, I work with big organizations. I've got that self-belief back. I've got that confidence back. All these things have been given me as a result. The 12 Steps and Alcoholics Anonymous, but one of the most amazing things it's given me, and I was thinking about this today, I always, before coming into AA, I always lived, no matter how things, how good things got before coming in, and there were good times, I always had this dread in my belly, this fear that everything was going to go wrong, everything was going to mess up, always coming into this room, working those 12 Steps. Today, no matter how bad things get, and I have had trials and low spots, I've got a belief in my belly that it's always going to be all right. It's going to turn out for the best. You know, I don't have that fear no more. I don't have that dread, you know, and that is probably the most amazing thing. Those 12 steps, sponsorship, the road to recovery meeting, all that, you know, it's, it's what it's given me. You know, it's amazing. And I'm not special and different. Anyone who's new can come in, do the simple things you'll hear. All these speakers speak about tonight and you can recover too. And I'll leave it there. Thank you, guys. Evening all, my name's John and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, John. Stand back. 27 years of the Road to Recovery Group. What a fantastic thing. And uh, thanks very much for your share, John. Um, you're a great example, mate. I'd just like to echo what you just said. 
big shout out and a thank you to my sponsor Wayne for uh, <clears throat> putting up with my brand of bullshit for um, 26 and a bit years. And by that calculation, you'll realize that wasn't quite here at the beginning. And um, but you know, enormously grateful that this 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 group had been formed by Wayne and um, his nibs over there, Mr. K, <clears throat> and a few other good men that uh, you know that you've seen on the probably seen on Facebook recently. You know, and um, grateful to those people as well. You know what I mean? And, and uh, um, why am I here? Well, um, I was going for a little walk around St. Morris in the, um, the glorious neighbourhood of uh, PL7 the other day. <clears throat> with the good lady and daughter number two and they, they'd had a couple of drinks before we went out for this walk must have been a weekend or something and um and i must have taken the, the mick out of them for you know for for so just sort of laughing and joking and daughter number two promptly pulled me up by saying well at least we can stop and uh you know there was a and there was a big high five between them on that one you know what i mean and um she gets that attitude from her mother not from me i'm telling you and uh, you know and i um you know but that's it they can stop you know, I can't stop. You know, when I take a drink of alcohol, I can't stop. It sets up this phenomenon of craving. Um, you know, and, and that's a, it slips off the tongue, this phenomenon of craving. But, you know, if you're new in AA or you're on Zoom or something and you're looking in, you're thinking, am I an alcoholic? Do I really have to come here and, and, and do this stuff and sit in these church halls? You know, because if you're on Zoom, one day you will come to sit in these church halls, June or something, I think it is. You know, uh, you know, it, you know, and you're thinking, has this really happened to me? Am I, am I, am I an alcoholic? The type described in that big book that Leroy was re reading out of earlier. Great to see Leroy being secretary, by the way. And uh, <clears throat> you know, well, if you can stop and stay stopped, you know, and if you can run your life sweet as cherry, and you know, and the, you know, you don't get into any big dramas. But if you can stay stopped, then maybe you're not one of us. But you know, I'm the type of alcoholic who cannot stay stopped you know i've tried you know I, I, I stopped drinking for five weeks once um you know sometime before i came to aa and i you know and like a lot of people you know i patted myself on the back and said i can't be a real alcoholic if i can stay stopped for that long you know because i can control it when i when i really want to if i really want to i can control it well that's just that's just bs really you know i i, I could not you know time after time I would repeat that desperate experiment with the first drink, hoping against hope that I could, that I somehow I would find the resources to, to live life comfortably without having to resort to alcohol. It meant, but really it meant everything to me. And, um, you know, not long before this group was started in, on April the 8th, yesterday was the anniversary, April the 8th, 1994, I was running in, you know, the last year or two of my drinking was just terrible, absolutely terrible. I remember feeling like I was in a prison. You know, I'd never been to prison. Uh, I would have gone to prison eventually for the things I was doing. But, you know, th at, th at that time, I just felt like I lived in a prison, like I lived in a little closed-in shell. You know what I mean? And th there was no world. When I, when I walked around town in Plymouth, you know, on a, on a skiving on a day off from work and just going from pub to pub, you know, with my Pink Floyd on my headphones, just, just zoning out from the world, I truly did feel as if I was an alien, you know, and the, the people around me didn't, were just kind of like one step removed, you know, and I wasn't really on the same planet, although I was on the same street. It was, a we it was the weirdest, most alienated feeling I can remember having. And just, just aloof from my fellows. I hated everybody. Pretty much, you know, I, I, the, the, very, the, the best you could expect from me was a was a was a very low opinion. <laughs> that was as good as you would get from me, you know. And um, and I and I thought that you know I could manage, you know, that I could I could you know I could run my life. You know, I, 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 I've said a lot of times recently, you know, I just thought if I could if I managed well enough, I could wrest happiness out of this world, and and it would mean something. But I can remember the day I can remember in our old house in Lipson, you know, you know uh, thinking. I'll never be happy again. You know, I'll never be happy again. I, and, I, and I just don't, it was such a, I didn't have to get arrested. I didn't have to go to jail. I didn't have to go to a treatment center or lose my driving license or lose my job or even lose the, the, you know, the good lady. I just, I, I, I felt that bad without losing all those things. You don't have to lose all that stuff to get step one, to admit that my life is unmanageable and I'm powerless over alcohol. You know, and um, you know, I, I came to AA and I came to a, a few meetings and, uh, you know, and I just wouldn't have it. I met Alexis and I met Wayne and I met my old sponsor, David W., bless him. 
you know, and a few other people, Yo Steve and, and um, probably Steve H and, uh, um, you know, people like that. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and they impressed me, but I was a long way from admitting that I couldn't do the job myself. But when I, when I reached that desperate point, I came back. Fortunately, I still had Wayne's number on a bit of paper, 660166, I think it is. Is that what I said? And, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, um, and I phoned him up again. And he was still, you know, answered the phone. And I walked up at a Friday night meeting at the Road to Recovery Group. And, uh, you know, which in the meantime had been started. No, it's the same old story, but it's my story. How fortunate I was on that day, some bleak day in November 1994. And uh, it wasn't the end of my drinking. You know, I still, you know, I got myself a sponsor, David W. And, um, and I promptly uh, stopped five minutes after he gave me the daily plan. I probably stopped doing it. And, um, you know, and I, and I see that with a lot of people. Um, but I got my ass kicked by this disease, you know, I had another drink and I see people come in and get, and get so far and then I have a slip, you know, and, um, it's infinitely better. These things don't happen, but in my, in my experience, and I'm sure in the experience of other people, you know, it, it's, it's no bad thing if it kicks us upstairs, you know, and it kicked me well and truly upstairs. I truly and utterly got the point, you know, that I'm an alcoholic of the type described in the bigger. If I don't take drastic spiritual actions, I'm going to die from my disease. Sure, no, no, no matter how clever I think I am, you know, or what attributes I've got, you know, and I, I made a fair fist of living. You know, I, I had a good start, you know, the, whatever circumstances I lived in, and I lived in a good family, they rolled me along the road, you know what I mean? And a lot of people can just keep rolling and to good effect, you know, and get bigger and stronger and better. You know, I rolled along for a while, and by the time I hit 32, I come to a grinding halt, you know, because on my own devices, couldn't do it. I came here and I tapped into a power, I tapped into a source of strength, a power infinitely greater than myself, this, a God of my understanding, you know, and it was in the, it was in the group, it was in the people. You know, these people were sorted out, these people, there was about 12 of them, they were, they were, they were on fire, they, they had something as an entity, as a spiritual entity, I could feel it. You know, and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted it, you know, and, I, and it took a little bit of time, it took a slip, but when I, when I gave in, suddenly you all became extremely attractive to me, you know, and, you know, and, and as a group, you became compelling. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to do what those guys have done. I'm going, to, I'm going to do what my sponsor told me to do. I'm going to do that step four. I'm going to get that step four done. And I went up to the university library, Polytechnic Library was it in those days, and I cracked that flipping step four out. You know, and I wrote down, and I confessed, if you want to call it that, you know, I read out all these things to my sponsor, you know, a lot of, a lot of gruesome, uh, to me, they seemed gruesome. I share most of them with, with sponsees today because they got no power over me. But, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and I shared all these, these, um, these grosser handicaps with my sponsor. And uh, I was rocketed in the fourth dimension. You know, I'd seen it in the people around me. I'd seen it in new people, this release, this release from the obsession with alcohol. Uh, and, and it happened to me. And, I, and, and, it was, and it was still amazing. You'd all said, John, if you do these things, if you do these spiritual actions, if you go through these steps with a sponsor and get the service in your home group and be a fully paid up member, and get there on time, don't get there five minutes late, 10 minutes late, get there on time and do your jobs, you will get what we've got, this release, this spiritual awakening by going through the 12 steps. And, but when it happened, it was still amazing. <laughs> it, still, it still blew my socks off, you know? And, and, uh, and I... Uh, you know, and then I promptly began to uh, balk on step eight. What are we like? I don't know about you, but what, what am I like? You know, I've just been rocketed into the fourth dimension, and then I become the laziest git on earth when it comes to step eight. You know, but I managed, I managed to get that step done. You know, I realized what I'd done. That was the beginning of true kinship with man and God, like it says in the literature. You know, all, all this time, you know, I, I, I just loved being in my home group. You know, I, I just, it was the highlight of the week. It is the highlight of the week. You know, I, I, I mean, I, uh, I don't know much, how much time I've got, but, you know, I, 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 life has so steadily got better and better and better. This, I kind of think, you know, all I've done is try to put my foot in the right path, you know, with the help of a sponsor, the help of these spiritual principles and Alcoholics Anonymous. If there's no way on earth I would be living in the circumstances that I'm living today with the people I'm living, not pissing them off quite as much as I used to, hardly ever as much as I used to, in fact, you know. And my wife hadn't called me selfish for ages, you know, could it be a couple of weeks at least, you know, and, and um, you, know, I'm just, you know, but seriously, you know, and, and I, but there's no way on earth I would have been in these happy circumstances if it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for being here, doing these spiritual things. Sometimes I don't want to do it. 
sometimes one, two, three, four or five of you will annoy me and piss me off and this, that and the other. But who cares? You know, we're, we're all just human beings. We're all just trying to do our, our best, you know, to stay here and stay sober. That rule number one, you know, be a fully paid up member of this, this program, this group, do what your sponsor says. Everything else is a bonus. I, mean, I, live, a, I live the life of Riley, you know, absolute Riley. You know, my wife's let me buy another bike. I mean, you know, I've got four. You know, it, it, I mean, this is, this is, you know, but daughter number two says I'm, I'm, I've, I've brainwashed her. <laughs> you know, I've brainwashed her good baby. Again. But I don't really care. I want to get another bike. Uh, you know, but it, it's, and it, but it's seriously, it's just been a fantastic, you know, just, I must be doing something right, you know, to, to live in this happy world. And it's, it's nothing really to do with, it's just that I've got step one. You know, and my sponsor has been an enormous help to me because when the poo hits the fan sometimes and I get cross-grained with myself, with the world, with other people, suddenly this all, the, the, the shine's gone off my home group, the shine's gone off the program and I start to drift back into thinking if I manage well, I can wrest happiness out of this life. And that, and that can happen now, 26 years later. It does happen now. It has happened now, 26 years later after I, I first joined this program. You know, and, I, and who do I ring up? I, I, you know, it ain't Ghostbusters. It's, hello, Wayne, it's John here. You know, can I come round? Can I, you know, can, can we have a chat? You know, I'm, 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 in a, I'm not in the right place at the moment, you know? And it can happen to people, you know? And um, unfortunately, people are still dying of this disease, you know? And, you know, it's, it's a shame to pick on anybody, but poor old Gary, you know, who, I, who, who was just a special guy, you know? And, uh, not not here anymore, and it's a, it's a great great shame, and uh, and um, you know, and I, I just got to keep doing what I was shown on day one, and um, uh, and, and, you know, and the upshot is, uh, you know, I'll say it again, you know, it's just it's just a, it's just a, it's just a great life, and we've had a great say a great year. We've had a, I mean, in some ways, we have had a great year because you know we've had you know we've had people like Sally, the, you know, our esteemed GSR, and, and and Wayne and the other people who've been you know. Stepping into service and Chris, the chairman, you know, just and you know, just the name of this, you know, it sounds like a thank you speech, but you know, it, who who just and I've you know, I've benefited from all these people doing all these things, you know, to keep this group going because and, and I've got sponsees, you know, a sponsee, you know, who's come in. Hello, Ian. I said always try to give them a big wave, and I never do big wave to Ian, and um, you know, and and you know, who've just got sober by coming to Zoom, coming to meetings on Zoom, you know, and hardly ever any physical meetings roaring their way through the program thinking I mean you know I wish I was that good when I was that young in the program you know what I mean and um you know today uh for what it's worth I was reading and just Bill sees it um as Bill sees it um the other day where he's, he talks about you know old timers um you know he was talking about himself being you know he'd become a he'd become a useful symbol you know of this program you know, and um, I'm lucky enough to still do a bit of service. You know, um, his lordship's put me in for Sunday secretary, which I'm grateful for. You know, it's, it's helped to keep, you know, I like to be active. But to some extent, hopefully on a good day, I'm a, I'm a reasonable symbol of what this, this program can do to people, you know. And, um, you know, and if for no other reason, <laughs> I intend to stay here for as, for, 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 for as long as I can, because it's, um, you know, it, it, is, it is the life. And, um, you know, that obsession with alcohol has not been back. I get a kick out of life. I'm going to wake up tomorrow, go out on one of my four bikes and, um, and, 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 uh, and come home and have an excuse to eat lots of food that I probably shouldn't eat. And, I, I'm, and you know, and, um, and, and, and obviously spend some time with a good lady. And, and that's a cracking weekend for me. You know, even if you, even if you take the bike away, I'm still going to have a cracking weekend, you know, because I'm with the people I love, got no obsession around alcohol. You know, and um, you know, it's it's um, it's a sad weekend because um, you know Prince Philip's Prince Philip's died. So you know, that's a that's a bit of a, a, bit, of a bit of a sad one. But you know, that's uh, that. But you know, um, it's just going to be another enjoyable weekend, full of fulfilment, full of purpose, full of direction, and no thought of alcohol whatsoever. You know, but I've got to stay. I'm looking at Leroy now. So how okay. much? I'm, I'm still okay. His watch must be going slow. <laughs> but um, yeah. So uh, what else can I say? Service, sponsorship. You know, sponsorship. Just an just a, an incredible thing. And and um, you know, a word or two in the, the last thirty seconds. I'm sure I've got. You know, just about the amazing the amazingness 
of the Road to Recovery Group Plymouth. You know, I understand now, I think, pretty well how fortunate, how blessed I am to be in this particular group, in this particular town, you know, working this program, seeing what this group does, seeing how it attracts people from far and near through, the, through, 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 this, through this pandemic. You know, the silver lining of this pandemic is that more people have been fortunate enough to experience the Road to Recovery Group Plymouth. And, you know, it's not that we're the best group in the world. Well, you know, we may well be, but, you know, you know, what, I'm, you know what I mean? It's not that we're the best group in the world. We do things the traditional AA way. We've always done things the traditional AA way. I don't understand, as much as I don't understand people who can have a couple of drinks, right, like the good lady and daughter number two, I don't understand the people doing things other ways in other AA groups. That's fine if that works for them. But I know this works real well, you know, for me, for someone like me, for you people, and for anybody who, 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 who comes across this can't deny that there's something special. There's something really special here, you know, that, 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 that marks out this group. Really, it really does. And, uh, and it's been slagged off over the years that I've been here. It's been slagged off right royally. You know, it's like, you know, you know, it's like a, a really good football team will have its detractors. I'll pick on Manchester United, for example, you know. I mean, they probably, everybody hated Alex Ferguson. Everybody hated their, their manager. Thought they were a load of rubbish. But they were the best team in the country. They were the best team in Europe for a while. You know, everybody, loads of people hate my sponsor. Screw them. You know, lo loads of people hate the Road to Recovery Group. Screw them. You know, this is where it's at. I'm not going to compromise, you know, the, the principles, the, the way that we do things. And as Wayne often says, you know, that we, we built up traditions here, ways of, ways of doing things, you know, you know, smartening up, you know, not, not rocking up in, in T-shirts and flip-flops to meetings and, you know, and getting here on time. You know, it, it, might, it seemed rigid when I came here 26 and a bit years ago. It seemed almost unreasonable, you know, and there's a group conscience, you know, people were getting... You know, it seemed to me like, you know, they were, they were getting put on, you know, but they weren't. You know, the, you, you've got to fight sometimes. You've got, to, you've got to stand up and be counted to, to, to defend the very principles, the tradition sometimes, but sometimes just the way that we do things. Otherwise, it's the thin end of the wedge. You know, like Wayne's beloved sponsor, Clancy, used to say, you know, a group where anything goes eventually becomes a group where nobody goes. You know, and then he said, that is the truth. You know, and sometimes you think, well, why, why am I... Why am I asking that guy or that girl to, you know, to, 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 to not do that or to do that? You know, it, it sounds a little bit, I feel like, a, you know, especially when I was GSR, and I'm sure all, all GSRs, you know, um, would, would get that feeling, you know, that maybe I'm, I'm sounding a bit officious and over the top here. You know, better to be that than just let things, you know, let things go on the slide, you know, because would it be the Road to Recovery Group if we did that? That's not to say that this group hasn't evolved over the years, hasn't, you know, you know, it, <clears throat> you know, it's just sponsorship has evolved over the years. This group has matured and grown, you know, and, um, you know, and a lot of us have just grown, I would say old, you know, some of us are getting younger, like Wayne, like Steve N, for example, he's always getting younger. And, um, you know, and, and just, and just, but it's matured and the people in it have matured, you know, and, and I look upon all the people who've been on this travel road with me, whether it's six months or six years or 16 years, or 20 years, and I just think, what a thing it is, you know, to be a member of the Road to Recovery Group Plymouth. Aren't we, aren't we so, so fortunate? And um, I'll uh, leave it there. Thank you. Thanks. Two great shares, John and John. And our final two speakers are Matt and Alexis. <laughs> Um, yeah, hi everyone, I'm Matt, I'm an alcoholic. Wow. Yeah, thanks uh, to Wayne for asking me to share tonight. That, that, I mean, that is really an honour, like John said. <clears throat> you know, to be stood up here on the group's 27th anniversary. I've been here for over 10 years. And, um, you, know, this is, you know, this is what I was always looking for when I was out there in the misery, like John described. You know, I could never, you know, even from when I was at school, I could never control my drinking, um, I always got insanely drunk. Um, I didn't understand then that that was something wrong with me, you know, that the, the allergy to alcohol, that was what was wrong with me. No one ever told me that. No doctor or counsellor ever told me that. I only learned that when I got here and when these people shared their stories. 
I mean, I've read the big book for myself. And, um, you know, no one ever, to- well, people told me I was an idiot a lot of the time or you're, you're a prat or you're a, you know, whatever. But no one really ever explained that I was trying to run my life on self-will like they did here and like it does in the big book. So when I got here and I, I'd heard your stories, um, you know, I came here a suicide and nervous wreck. I was really on my last legs when it came to drinking and there was probably a lot more misery to come. I hadn't hit the streets, but that was, that was inevitable, it seemed to me now. And, um, I, you know, I got here and when I heard your stories and I read the big book for myself, and I knew what you were talking about. I, I was up against a fatal progressive illness called alcoholism. And there was no way out, it seemed, unless I was prepared to pay the price and come to AA, you know, concede, you completely give myself to this uh, simple program, do the 12 steps under the guidance of a sponsor, you know, go through the plan of recovery in the big book. And that, that was, you know, that was it. You know, many people, that is the last resort. It was for me, uh, but I did it. And I stand here, you know, 10 years later, you know, to tell that tale. And that's kind of why this group exists. You know, the people that have been coming here 10 years and 15 years and 20 years and longer than that. You know, we simply come here week in, week out as a place where newcomers, you know, can bring their problems. You can come here on the on the absolute you know, in, in the pits of despair, but that we have a way out here that really works. We have a solution for you, which you you may have already heard about, but you've disregarded it. Like, I'll, I'll be able to sort this out myself. But I learned that the hard way myself. And some people have here. I cannot beat alcoholism on my own unaided resources. I've got to have something else. I've got to have a higher power. Um, to me at the start, that was the power of this AA group. You know, and, um, you know, I just went through the 12 steps and the obsession to drink has been removed. Uh, it's what it promises us in the big book. And um, I, um, you know, I've been sober ever since. No temptation to drink in over 10 years. And that's all because I went through the steps and I've continued, I was honest with my sponsor totally. I continue to do that. You know, continue to check in, check in with him and be honest with him. Um, and I've lived... You know, these last three or four years in particular, I've lived through a lot of um, pressure and difficulty and stayed sober comfortably because I've got these tools and I know where I know where I have to be on a Friday night at 6.30. I know where I have to be on a Sunday night, you know, for the big book study. And I know where I have to be on a Wednesday or a Tuesday, whichever it is. You know, I, I know where I've got to be and I know what time I've got to read my sponsor and, and all these things. You know, and the daily actions that I do are what enable me to just have a stability and a consistency and a, and a clear head that I never had when I was drinking in active alcoholism. And it also enables me to sometimes match, you know, calamity and chaos with a, a bit of a calm, sort of steady hand and, and, and some serenity. And uh, it's just been an absolute miracle. I've loved every second of it. I wish we could all be here together tonight in this hall, but we simply can't. Um, I hope downstairs you're hearing this because I know there was a te- technical issue at the start. But, um, yeah, for anyone that's out there, especially, you know, if you're in Barrow or Cambridge or Liverpool, wherever else it is you found us on Zoom this year, this last this last year or so, you know, one day soon, maybe sometime late in the summer, you know, hopefully you can visit and we can have the meeting of all meetings when we first get back all together. It's going to be great. I can't wait for it. And, um you know, if, if you're out there tonight and you're new and you, you can't stop drinking, you know, this is the way out here, AA. A lot of, you've probably tried a lot of other things that are just not working. You know, this isn't, this isn't a silly idea. Just come to AA, get a sponsor, go through the 12 steps and you can live happy and sober um, and have the best years of your life. And it's all down to this group. Thanks. Yeah. I'm Alexis, I'm an alcoholic. Alexis. Yeah, uh, thanks for all your shares and uh, it's, uh, welcome to the anniversary meeting and I'm, uh, I, I, it's great to have the opportunity to speak at the anniversary meeting as well. Um, it's, uh, 
it's been an astonishing 27, 28 years. It's, I, it's kind of my history in the group's history. Uh, I'm, I'm 28 years sober, and the group's like 27 years sober, if you like. Uh, the, my, my first birthday was the week before we started the group. And that's how I always... So the group is always... I hate bloody arithmetic. He's always one week and one year younger than me. It was the other way around. Anyway, it's uh, it's just been an amazing 28 years in my recovery. It's been, it's, it's been a, I, I kind of think, you know, what does, I, if you're new, maybe you're thinking about doing the steps, maybe you're on the first few steps, you've got a temporary sponsor, thinking, am I going to go through with this? Maybe you're on step four and you're thinking, oh, this is just over the top, whatever these, these things are. And, and, you know, it's easy, like when to relate to someone's drinking, if I told you my, my, how I felt about alcohol, how I felt about that compulsion, you could relate to that easily. But I know when I start going on about what it's like to be sober with the 12 steps, I know you don't relate to that. I, I, I know. And, and maybe I, I, I don't think I saw people that were sober with the 12 steps before I did them, even though I related to their drinking, even though I was desperate to get the results of the 12 steps, I, I didn't really relate to them as sober people because it seemed impossible. Like they, they seemed like not, not quite this bad, but like if, if I was at church and the person at the front was like, hallelujah, and everything's great. I feel fantastic now. I've given my soul to God, whatever. And I would not relate to that person. I think they are in a different state of mind and psychology that I can never enter because God isn't real. Religion isn't real. And I just write them off. You know. And f- for me, sober alcoholics who claim to be happy sober. I wasn't quite as brutal in my writing. I didn't have a moral repugnance against sober alcoholics like I had against religious people, but I still kind of wrote them off a little bit. I couldn't see it. I couldn't, you know, and and that says it all. If you're new, if you're struggling, the fact that I would look at a sober alcoholic and think they're not real, they're not like me, showed just how damaged and sick and how much I was suffering from an illness that would eventually kill me. You know, an illness, it looks like when, when you go out on a Saturday night, I mean, obviously not recently, you go out on a Saturday night, it looks like there's loads of people who are alcoholics getting pissed, falling over in the street, God knows what. But that is not alcoholism. That wasn't my alcoholism. My alcoholism, the symptom was the drink, you know, but it was something far, far worse. And the thing is, I would look at the people out there and I think there's loads of drunk people. There's loads of people that drink too much. There's loads of people that stop drinking. You know, but my deeper sickness was as dangerous as schizophrenia or psychosis. Because when I knew that drink was going to kill me, I was 23 years old when I knew it. I wasn't close to dying from drink, but I knew it because I'd come to enough meetings that I'd had a vision of my future. I don't know why, you know, I always smile when I say that, but it was the worst moment of my life to be 23 years old and know that I had a psychological compulsion to drink that would actually not be put off by an imminent agonizing death. When I knew that, and it wasn't just a theory, in my gut, in the same way that I knew that if I didn't drink water or eat food that I would die, in the same way that I knew I didn't get a desperate breath after being underwater for two minutes, I knew that no matter how close I got to death, I would drink. And when I knew that, I understood alcoholism. This is not, this is not just a heavy drinking thing. And uh, the good news was when I realized that my alcoholism was as as dangerous as as cancer or heart disease, and I was just as powerless over it as I would have been over those illnesses, it did cut through all of the crap and it didn't matter that I couldn't relate to the sober alcoholics in terms of their sobriety. None of that mattered. It didn't matter that I felt a moral repugnance towards the 12 steps, towards this spiritual thing. Um, all that mattered is I did not want to die like that. I just didn't want to die like that. And it, was, it wasn't even the death. I, I, it was the, the years that would lead up to it. And it wasn't just the physical agony that I knew I would go through. From the ages of 15 to 23, I would never have imagined before that 
how painful life could be. It was agonizing that, that the hangovers weren't even the word, nor people don't know what the word hangover means. Watching my family cry, the disappointment, I could never have imagined what it felt like that I could hate myself so much. And um, the bottom line is, I, it, it just, that realization, that realization that I was going to have maybe a decade of that, that amplifying, getting worse and worse every year, the psychological and physical suffering, I thought nothing else matters. Not my beliefs, not my desires, nothing matters. You know, nothing at all. I was utterly focused that all I had to do was find a way to stop drinking permanently. And that was it. And that was it. And that's when I got my sponsor, Wayne. And I was, just tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Because I'd had these, not quite that level of clarity before, but I had these moments where I'd come to after maybe six months or a year of binge drinking. And I'd think, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to get out. I've got to get out of this. I've got to get out of this. And then what would happen is slowly the memory of the suffering would go away. And I'd go back into another six months or a year of binge drinking. And I thought, this is my chance. I've never, ever had this level of realization of my powerlessness over alcohol like this before. You know, I've got a sponsor, this guy. And there were two people, Chris and Ben, who were both sober like a couple of years. And Wayne was sober five years. And I, I just knew, and I, I've been reading the book Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, and uh, I, 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 I knew I had to get it right. And I would, I would say, I'd make sure I was telling him everything um, in case I was getting anything wrong. I'd make sure um, I'd be like, am I doing this right? And I, and, and, and I was really just, just uh, what was the end result? What was the end result of that attitude with a sponsor doing the 12 steps? The end result was that 27, 28 years ago, I lost all compulsion to drink. And it wasn't like, um, and I think I imagined before doing the 12 steps, I don't know what I imagined it would be to lose, to be able to stop drinking. I just like the idea, I don't want to drink anymore, but I don't know, I didn't, couldn't imagine what it felt like to be able to stop drinking. And um, it, it the, all I can tell you, with the 12 steps, it's not like a, a willpower thing with me. It was, it, was like, it was like it dissolved. It was like the problem of drinking dissolved inside of me. I, it, it had no connection to me. It wasn't pushed down. So it wasn't like, oh, it's just pushed the, 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 the craving for drink, the obsession. It wasn't pushed down into the subconscious or anything like that. It, it, it literally dissolved. That's how it felt. And... Um, other things, I bore myself saying these same things year after year. But, you know, if you're new, all right, not only are there very few methods that have demonstrable results of recovery from alcohols, not only is that what's an offer, and this is why I say the same thing year after year, it, it's, it's, um, there's more than that. And that in itself is a miracle because I, 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 a few years ago, after being sober for like 25 years, I had a little investigation into what was available to recover from alcoholism. And then it just not a lot has changed. And you get the occasional thing like an academic paper, oh, we have case studies of people staying two years sober using this method. Three, and I'm just like, that's absolutely bloody, yeah, great. I'm a scientist. I'm open-minded. I want alcoholism research to progress. But you don't come to someone 25 years sober and say, I've got a new method for you. You don't have to go to AA anymore. We've got something that keeps people sober two or three years. And I'm like, well, I need something that's going to keep me sober until God willing, I die at the age of 80. You know, this is, this is a lifelong condition. And there are not many things out there that people will... People want to help us. They want to help us. And they will try and say kind words to us. They might try and say harsh words to us. Do, you know, do this, stop drinking, don't drink so much, whatever. But very few people, even highly trained professionals, have, a, a, you know, have the answer to this. Very few. And this is one answer. It's not the only answer, but this is one answer. And that's why I say the same thing year after year. And like I say, it's not just the drinking. I had... When I realized that the compulsion to drink had melted away, that same compulsion I was convinced would kill me in agony, 
I realized, and I knew this, I knew I'd been feeling better for the last few weeks that I was doing the steps with Wayne. And, um, <clears throat> and they said, you know, you read the book, Alcoholics Anonymous, and it says, oh, a life beyond the world of streets. It doesn't just talk about stopping drinking. It talks about the, 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 the depression, the self-pity going, the, the self-hatred. It talks about all the emotional problems that seem beyond, beyond solution to the alcoholic, getting vastly better. So I, I'd read it, but to actually feel it and then to have a moment of realisation sitting in my bedroom in 1993 that not only had the problem to drink dissolved away, but that the reason I was feeling better wasn't just that. I'd been applying spiritual principles, controversial topic with some people. This is a spiritual program. Your higher power, you know, spiritual program needs some sort of higher power, a, a God, a Buddha, a spirit, the spirit of the universe. Uh, but it, it, it'll the earth, you know, whatever, whatever gets you going, you know, whatever just something, enough open-mindedness, just the willingness to believe in a power greater than myself was all I needed. Whatever I picked as that, as that thing. But I'd been applying these spiritual principles. I'd, I'd been, you know, I just imagine the newcomer here in this next line, and I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I've been getting on my knees and praying to some kind of God for a few weeks, months, leading up to this realisation. I'd, um, I'd been using the serenity prayer. You know, I'd been open, I'd done the third step where theoretically I got on my knees and said a prayer to a higher power saying, I hand my life over to you, which it's before I got the open mindedness through fear of death, that just stank to me of every evangelical TV program I'd ever seen, handing ourselves over to God, to a higher power. It stank of that awful pulpit preaching, as my sponsor Wayne says, tambourine bashing. I just hated the whole idea, but I'd been doing it. I'd been doing it. I've been getting on my knees, handing my life over. And I sat in my room and I knew I'd never have to drink again. And I knew that these spiritual principles were the reason I was feeling better. And they could solve all of my problems. I don't know why I realized that. I, I you know, I tried to give a sense of maybe emotion why I realized it, but I knew spiritual principles uh, oh, face ID on the iPhone. Isn't it a pain? There we go. Uh, just keeping an eye on the time, not checking my messages. So I knew, and I... And it, and it, was, it was an absolute objective truth for me. It wasn't... I didn't make it up, and that's another thing, I think, sometimes with newcomers. And you can even get that after you've been here a few years. You look at some guys just on the steps, standing up at the pulpit. The pulpit. Freudian slip, standing up at the um, the lectern, saying, "I feel fantastic," da, 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 da. and it's easy for me to take that for granted. Or somebody that's 15 years sober, and maybe I'm 23 years sober, and I'm going through a difficult time, and someone's 15 years sober, it's talking about how fantastic their life is. And it can be easy when we see somebody talking about how happy they are through the 12 steps. It, it can be easy to poo-poo it or not to identify with it if we're going through a negative period. But it is real. It's objectively real for me. And who the hell am I to look at someone else doing the 12 steps coming up? You know, and they state their happiness, you know, and it is, it is one of the most ignorant things. If you go to another meeting and you share how great you feel and someone puts you down sharing how great you feel, that's ignorance as far as I'm concerned. It may be alcoholic sickness, but it's ignorance. Someone's done the steps and they're happy. We should be bloody celebrating it. And that's one of the reasons, incidentally, now I'm being a bit pulpity now, so let me just tone it down. That's one of the reasons... Uh, also, if you knew, that, that I celebrate the birthday of this group, the anniversary of this group. 27 years it's been around. Um, and 27 years. If you have a group that's been around 27 years, there's a good chance there's a core of people, especially a group this size, there's a good chance there's a core of people in that group who've been sober Five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, up to 27 years. I mean, and longer. I Wayne was around five years before this group started. So 
So the, the, the length and survival and stability of a group is a great message in itself. And I do, as the years go on, you know, it seems odd to say this after 28 years, but it is relaxing being here. It's in a way that is not just sitting on my bed, putting on some monks, lighting some incense, or um, going to a dinner party with friends, or that, that's all relaxing. But there's something here that is the closest to what it used to be like to be able to relax with a beer. In an AA meeting, it, it satisfies a part of me. <laughs> the people who remember the Heineken advert are thinking, where is he going with this? But uh, in an AA meeting, it satisfies a part of me that nothing else can. It's one of the few places where it's pointless to be here unless I try and think of others. It's just pointless. Yeah, you know, I can, you know, it's, I, I, ha and I can spend so many of my days, hours during the day thinking of myself. It's pointless to be at an AA meeting and not at least try, even if for just 20% of the time I'm here, to think of other people, to be of service, to do something useful. It's pointless me opening my mouth like this unless at a meeting, unless I'm, I'm trying to help someone. And that combined with the fact I'm, I'm with other alcoholics, hearing the messages, you know, hearing people like John, John and Matt, feels weird to say John, John, but there you go, like John, John and Matt, you know, th this really, uh, it does something for me. Um, so what's it been like that the, the 27, 28 years that I've been sober? I get the urges whenever I want to say something like from the heart about my ex deep experiences of life, I just want to grab the lectern. I want to speak into the camera. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the, the, the what it'll be, I'll be glad when Zoom's gone because knowing that camera's there does give me an urge for the theatrical. But, um, you know, the last 28 years, Life can be amazing when you're sober. The thing is, when I was drinking, or even when I wasn't drinking, but I was obsessed with drink, it was, uh, it was what my life revolved around. There was no chance for anything else to happen in life. Anything else I did in life before I did the 12 steps was just the diversion from drink. And deep down, I knew that. I couldn't really experience life because it's all about when's the next drink going to happen. It may not be for six days, six weeks, six months, whatever. But deep down, I knew that my life was about drink and not about life. And the last 28 years, life has been about life. That's, that's not a very good way of putting it. Life is, life is full. If you are still drinking, if you are new, if you're doing the 12 steps, life can be a fantastic thing. The world is full of wonderful things. Yeah, it's not all like a, a happy ending film or anything. You know, it's not like a series where at the end of every 30 minutes and something wonderful happens. But wonderful things do happen in life. And when I've done the 12 steps, I don't have to screw them up and muck them all up and self-sabotage all the beautiful things in life. I've had fantastic opportunities in my career. I've met some wonderful people, had loving relationships. I've got a daughter. I've got a girlfriend. I've... There are amazing opportunities in life. And I see it again and again in people that get sober. But I have to stop drinking. And I have to let go of alcohol. I have to be free of the obsession so that I can throw myself into life. And that's one of the biggest secrets. Anyone that tells you, oh, the, you know, don't get obsessed with AA or don't go to a very structured group like the Road to Recovery group, they're missing the bloody point. Because if I can get my alcoholism self obsessed with something like the Road to Recovery Group and Alcoholics Anonymous, I'm free. I am free because the non-alcoholic is just all the opportunities in life. All my energies that I would normally be obsessing around, God knows what, and going around in circles, I can divert them into the spiritual purpose of Alcoholics Anonymous or my home group, and I'm, I'm free. You know, and that, that is the power, because in the end, <laughs> that is the power. I don't want to say that to you, like power, but that is the power that this program can give us, the power to live a, a just a, 
an amazing sober life because life and that's i'll finish on that life can be amazing i promise you and i promise you life can be absolutely fantastic but i had to make that sacrifice get that sponsor and do the 12 steps and that's me <laughs> Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.